I'm going to talk about composable components. I know this is not the original title of the talk, uh, but I, after measuring the time, it was too much content. So I think this is about the title at the end. Uh, this, is, uh, this is mostly a practical talk. It's not that inspirational like Yehuda's. Uh, it's more things I saw, uh, mistakes I made, and what I get on the process of building a very reusable add-on or something that intends to be so. My name is Miguel. You can reach me anyway in these handles in GitHub or Twitter. And as I said, I've been in London contracting for a while. Um, and I want to start this presentation with this tweet from James R. Rosen, a prominent member of the community. The further I get into an Ember app, the more I realize that every component should be handmade not community built, non work for all use cases. Who has felt this way before? Because I did. I mean, this is pretty much a, a common pain point. You try to reuse an add-on, you find that it's not really as perfect for your use case as you thought it was. And uh, when we want to build something with a kind of well-known component like uh, date pickers or select components, or many examples, you think, OK, this has to be a solved problem. Someone has built this before, and I can reuse it. So you go to the internet with this face. And if you are something like me, probably this is the process you follow. Then you, you go to emperorobserver.com and look for the kind of component you want. You gather five alternatives, probably the one with the hacker scores or the coolest names. Then, from these five alternatives, you count the stars and pick the three with more stars, because they seems to be the better. Then you compare the features and see which one is closer to what you want to build. And in case you, have a, a, you, don't, need, you don't know which one is the best, you look at the latest commit, and this is, a, this is it. Uh, congratulations. This is how being a front-end engineer looks like, except for a small detail, which is make this component work for your specific use case. Uh, I reckon that this is the hard part. This is the definition taken right away from the dictionary. Reuse. To use again, especially after savaging or a special treatment or processing. The key part in this definition is after a special treatment. How, this is what I call the coefficient of, uh, of reusability. How expensive is to make this component that is pretty close to what I want to do, be that do what I want to do exactly. This, or uh, in other words, how much cheaper is for me use this component compared with building my own solution. We are developers, and if this is only one thing in the world we developers are good at, is at giving estimates. We nail it every time. I, I mean, I don't know a developer has missed a deadline ever. <laughs> so we said, OK, this is pretty close to what I want to do. So this should be done, done by lunchtime, perhaps the end of the day. You know who this ends. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the, our phase after the process. The TLDR is everything starts fine. You deal with the CSS. You change some set index problems here. Then you try to style this thing. It turns out to be a table. Um, uh, then you say, OK, let's look for an option for doing this specific tweak. OK, there is none. OK, I need to extend this thing. Oh, it turns out that extending, I need to know a lot of the inners of the component. And then you uh, try to do so, something breaks in the other corner of the component, and two days after, and a lot of tears, you decide to throw everything away and roll your own solution. And I think that this is because most add-ons, sorry, most components follow this pattern, the LMAO pattern, standing for large monolith with an army of options. <laughs> and this is because, I mean, I think it's not our fault, it's the fault of how the web was conceived at the beginning. If we think about uh, native components, like inputs or selects, there are uh, a black box with a set of attributes you can pass to customize 
the behavior, and that's everything we had. And it happens to say with jQuery plugins, by example, where you have a pass an, uh, an object with options that that's the only interface you can have. Some of them have string templates at most, and that's everything you, you can do. And as Ember developers, we know better because uh, using Ember, we have access to better primitives to building things. We have bindings, we have actions, we have components. Things we are very used, we all love. And by using add-ons that can only be customized by passing uh, a coll an infinite collection of options, you are be limiting your, your end users to the only the thing you have predicted or you have foreseen where there is uh, and preventing them from doing anything different. This is uh, what I do for, for uh, scratch, uh, scratching my own itch uh, with select components. This is a new select component I made like a month ago. The reason for that is I wanted a select component that allowed me to customize pretty much every bit of it, but this, this is just not doable by with, uh, with existing solutions. So this presentation is mostly about what I learned during the process and some tricks you can make to make as well components that can be reusable. Uh, before going any further, this is reinventing the wheel. This is a paradigmatic example of reinventing the wheel. Nobody wants even another select components. So if you're going to reinvent the wheel, think twice about the solution. Share, I mean, value existing solution. Are they possible to extend? I'm just being stubborn. Uh, after you think, OK, this is really not possible, share your pain with other people. Because if you have a pain, you are probably not the only one having the same pain. It's a common concern. And look for help. Solo heroes die soon. And uh, for this specific add-on, I contacted pretty much every single person involved into a select component in the community. And they gather the same feedback they have. I mean, most of them are wrapping existing jQuery libraries. And I got help from uh, Miguel Cobain, uh, Miguel Andrade in real life, which is helping me building this add-on. He's the maintainer and creator of uh, Ember CLI Select Eyes, which is a wrapper around Select IJS, Ember Paper, and some other well-known add-ons. And together, we decided to build a, a select component that solve this thing. Now that we are reinventing the wheel and we are said that this is the thing we have to do, at least clear your mind and uh, throw away your existing biases about how the API should lo look like, and try to see if I want to reinvent the wheel, at least I want to add some value that wasn't in there before. Uh, so let's start by designing the API and start with the minimum thing, which for a select component is passing the list of options. That's the minimum thing you have to do. And also, you need to be able to say the component, among these options, this is the one that is selected. This is the minimum thing. So far, this is pretty much useless, because it's a component that has no communication with the outer world. So we need to do something else. We, can, we have two options, which is having bindings, double bindings, or using actions, which is the Ember 2.0 uh, way of doing things. And I find this approach much better. Uh, this. I mean, this I th is for me is kind of a mantra, but uh, bindings are star starting to be seen as dangerous things. And actions are very explicit, so that's why I went for only an unchanged action that does whatever you want to do. And if what you want to do is basically simulating a double binding, this is the only thing you, can, you have to change, basically. You can use the new mood helper available in 1.13 to say this action mutes this value. And that's the equivalent of a double binding for this component. <coughs> Another thing is this. That's the API I don't want to build because nobody wants this. Not only because it's cumbersome, that, but it's because you can't remember all the options. And basically, every time you need to do something with the select, you need to go to the documentation, browse for five minutes before finding what exactly is what you want to do. So pretend that every option costs you 50 pounds and twice as much as is mandatory. I mean, and if this money goes out from your pocket, this is something we, you will consider twice about before doing this kind of APIs. And this is another thing I value a lot. We are, I mean, this component is, uh, is built in Ember for Ember developers, meaning that we 
we can, uh, you, we can assume we have a shared knowledge among the community, and we find this kind of syntax nice. And I think, okay, everybody's used to the select component. What is the minimum set of changes I need to apply to this well, uh, sorry, the each component, uh, to this each to become a select, and is this thing. So having a using blocks, it's uh, given us the best or the closest match to the existing each component that we can have. And now is where the important part of the talk applies is when we build components, most of them are uh, only one component, meaning that depending on the complexity of the component leads to a pretty daunting code base with a lot of lines. And if when designing an application, we apply object oriented programming principles, the same principles apply to uh, the same principles that apply to building an application apply to building a component in a, in a smaller scale. So this is the mantra for this talk is favor composition over inheritance. If we uh, create a component that is uh, complex enough, we uh, will end up with a very messy code base, no matter how good, how good as a parameter you are. So you need to split things. That's how we manage complexity. And for extracting uh, responsibilities, the single responsibility principle, this is three steps. You identify responsibility, divide it, and compose two objects, two entities that interact, with interact between themselves. So first point is identifying the, uh, the select component is going to be the example on, the, on all the talk. What do our select have in common? They uh, have uh, a trigger that toggles the visibility of the list. They have uh, this thing has to be on top of everything and bypass any overflow rules, so it has to be attached to the body of the DOM. Uh, clicking anywhere else closes this is kind of mantra. Uh, clicking an option, select it, and you have something else like uh, keyboard navigation, uh, hovering, etc. But if you realize the three things, the three first things are not exclusive to selects. They have many examples. This is select and behaves this way, but. This is the component we are very using GitHub for adding tags to things. And it's kind of the same thing. You have a list of options, you have some content. Y it opens when you click on, on, on an icon. This is a drop down button from, from Bootstrap. It behaves the same way, but it's not a select, it's just some, it's a trigger with a floating box of content. And I don't know where it came this thing, but this basically you click and you see a floating box with uh, stuff inside. So it's always the same pattern. We have a, a trigger and a, a content, trigger and content, trigger and content. So let's generate this component as a separate stuff and uh, create the simplest thing that works, which is, uh, I don't want sound this. <laughs> Basically, this is a basic select component, or sorry, select component, a uh, drop down. You click on the thing and it opens, you click outside and it closes. Very simple, takes like 25 lines of code, and that's all, all we want. It's very simple. Uh, this is what I call basic drop down. Everybody can use it for uh, creating this kind of floating box stuff. And basically, a trigger with an action, and when it's open, it has some content, nothing else. The code inside is not any different. It's basically an action toggle that when it's open, it closes it, and when it's closed, it's open. And we add the event handler to the body in order to be able to click to dismiss it when we, when we click outside. And let's use this thing to build another component on top. This is uh, the basic of ML Power Select. This is simplified, but basically, you have the drop down. In the content of the drill down, you have the you iterate over the options and yield the 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 each option on the on the block, and the alternate thing is the inverse block that yields when you have no options on on the on the collection, and the thing below is the the trigger. So the same thing, the same block we use for showing each option is also reused for showing the thing on the trigger. And the the key point is. The initial design of the API remains the same. Now I'm using two components below, and this is an implementation, implementation detail that nobody is aware of, and we are still providing the same experience that is using this thing as it was only one component. But the complexity is much smaller. And we can repeat this process as many times as we want, extra responsibilities. By example, this is uh, an example of the documentation, and if you realize 
the floating box has some uh, smart behavior because it needs to be positioned depending on the space around the trigger. Uh, it also needs to uh, be on the body, as I mentioned, which is not, do is not done yet. Uh, I wish there was a component for rendering content in another place of the application. And it turns out that Ember Milia, thanks, creates something, cre uh, Ember Wormhole, which is uh, something for rendering things outside. This is the only change I had to make. Ember Wormhole to destination element, and this thing magically appears somewhere else. So we are now using three components. One of them is Community Build for creating a, on, uh, a consistent experience. And the only change is this line here. And then after open it, I need to do some maths to reposition this thing in X and Y. This is not interesting, but that's the only change. Very simple. And now we have this uh, key uh, advantage of being an Ember developer and having add-ons that this component has to be rendered uh, somewhere. And we need to have this destination div somewhere else. And we can leverage. Ember, um, Ember CLI co uh, hooks to make this automatic. So at the end, the user doesn't know about, th about this detail. This is using three components. The API remains the same. And we are still develop I mean, making things uh, consistent and simpler. Now, let's go to the implementation of the select itself. This is the basic thing you can do. Basically, you iterate over the option. You render uh, a list item. Uh, that has some classes. And when you mouse over, you highlight it. And when you click it, you select it. There is a problem in this code that is, if you remember, when you select something in a, in a select component, you need to close it. But now, the thing that is open or closed is not our component. It's the uh, underlying Ember, uh, power, uh, sorry, Ember basic dropdown component. So the problem is we need to have communication between components when we compose. This is the thing where we were, until recently, very limited. This is the usual way we had from sending messages from child components to parent components. We have the send action thing. We pass the name of the action, and this is going to fire an action with these arguments to the parent scope, no matter if it's a component or a controller or whatever. And that's the only way we have to communicate at the beginning. Problem is, this is unidirectional communication, so we send things from parent, sorry, from children to parent. Recently, with closure actions, we were able to add some extra thing, which is we can use the action keyword to create a closure uh, action, and this action is just a property in your component that you can call, and you have a return value. So it allows parent components to respond to messages with data and users. I mean, this is kind of, uh, you have bidirectional communication with the, when the uh, communication starts in the child component. But there is a still a different use case, which is ours. How do we communicate from parent to child? It's not possible at the moment. How do we do that? And, it's, and the reason is that uh, data downs actually up seems to prevent this thing. But this is not exactly true, because we do have a way of communicating from child scopes to the parent scope, which is the GIL keyword. The GIL keyword happens to be very convenient, because the now that actions can be functions, you can GIL an action to the parent scope, which in this case is the action close, which it belongs to the drop-down component. And in here, you GIL it you receive it and you pass it to the select component, sorry, to the uh, select action on the component. And now you have access to this thing and you can call it. So basically, when you select an item on the list, you get this item, but you also get another action that you can invoke to command the child component to close. So you are giving a remote controller to your parent to, hey, do some, this is my remote controller. When you are done, call close on me. And besides, you can even pass this down to the user. So is the user the one who decides if af after selecting an item, the component should close or not? It, so you can pass this action up as many times as you want until the end user has access to it and uses it. So we have inverted the data down actions up thing 
so we should rename it probably. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not breaking the rules because we have a still unidirectional communication that just happens to be in the other way. So it goes from the parent to the child, so the children, because the children has given you a remote control. This bidirectional communication is the one that enables new patterns in composition. We can enable, by doing this, new levels of customization, because we may think, OK, apart from giving the action close, we, I, may, I may want to give the open, action, the open action, the toggle action. I want to have a Boolean flag which is it's open, true or false. And we think, OK, if we want so many things, why we, why we, we just jiggle the component so they have access to everything? Uh, this is, please don't. <laughs> this is uh, very dangerous because we are exposing our controller entirely naked, naked to the to the public, and we are exposing private things from him we don't want people to see. By example, we are exposing any inner implementation detail. If we want to change one, uh, or refactor something, people may be using private APIs. So it turns out that there is this, which is the, the shortest and most useful helper in relation to the number of characters on it I've ever seen, which is the hash helper. And this is this one-liner gets and uh, receives a hash and returns this very object at the same thing. And this is the way you can use it. This you have this option, and you pass close the action, open the action, is open the, the, the value. And this creates an object, so you can yield this object. And by the way, this is coming in Ember 1.3. I think it's a, a feature flag, but I made a polyfill, so you can use it. And again, it's not something to be proud, this, this line. <laughs> 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 but uh, still, in here, insta instead of receiving uh, the action, we receive the dropdown itself. I call it dropdown because it's kind of a remote control of, of the dropdown. It's my Public API is my public version of myself and expose. OK, this is my public version of me. This is the things you can use for, uh, of me as a component. And you pass it. And the nice part is you receive the drop down. And given that this is an object, every action has a name, given that it creates a sense of you can name things or you can say how you want the, the users to uh, use your API because the action that closes your API is named close and it's always the same thing. And uh, this is uh, covering this bidirectional communication. Another thing I want to say about components, which is why I think that giving 20 configuration options to a component is not the proper, th the proper way to do because it's only giving you the ability to modify very specific parts of the component in a very specific way you have designed. And you can cover use cases. This is just impossible. But who can cover you, your use cases is the end users if you let them. Enable this composition for everyone. This is a powerful tool that everybody should be able to use. So if we think about the select component, uh, I see two main parts that can be customized. One of the is the selected item, the thing inside the trigger, and the other is the, the list. What if we split this into two more components inside? One is the Ember Power Select selected, the other is the Ember Power Select options. You don't never will see them, but they are there underneath. And we render using the, co the component keyword. This is available in Ember already. We render this component by name, and you p we pass all the things this component may need. And we also uh, do the same with the other component in the bottom. And the key part of this, we are creating a slots of your component that you can replace with your own solution if the one that is gave by the component by default doesn't work for you. So in this example, where you have the same API we had before, by adding just one line, you can say, the list of options that comes by default with this add-on doesn't work for me. Let's create a different thing. And the same thing for the selected component. And that enables infinite possibilities. We can have animated uh, selects that 
basically behave the way we want using liquid fire. You can drag and drop items into a multiple select because you want to reorder them in a specific way. You can, uh, I mean, you can do pretty much anything you want with this select because if something of the select doesn't work the way you want, you run, you have the freedom to replace parts of it with anything you want. And everything I'm talking about is something you can use right now. Nothing of this is coming in future version of Ember, even if there is things that will enable even more powerful uh, patterns. This is er everything available. So uh, please, I mean, create. I want this to be able or enable people to create a wide range of simple focus components that people can reuse to build things on top, like a Lego game. So we, uh, as a community, create add-ons on top of add-ons on top of add-ons, so complexity is managed, and we uh, can reuse things the best thing we can. Thank you.